This is Let's Talk Business with your hosts, Mark Ebinger and Heather Bain. Now, here's Mark. Welcome to Let's Talk Business, a show that talks entrepreneurship with some of the best businesses in the San Antonio area. Coming up on the show today, we're going to talk with Wayne Keller, the executive director of Cadence Hope Foundation. Wayne, welcome to the show. Hi, how you doing today? Good, doing good. I've heard good things about Cadence well, Hope when you. I was doing my research on it. It's a pretty impressive organization. The origin story is pretty cool. I know, I love as the well. origin story. You're familiar with the... Oh, yes. Me and uh, Wayne have been circling the Chamber of Commerce <laughs> for a while now together, and I still feel like there are things about him I don't know, but Cadence Hope is something that I have heard a lot about, and it's a great cause. You know, it's it, it's literally something that we really feel, my wife and I really feel that God said, hey, you, I need you to do something for me. And after about six months of, of uh, complaining <laughs> about no one helping these families, my wife looked at me one day and she said, you know who needs to do this, don't you? And I thought for a second, what have I put my, what have I got myself into? Yeah, right? yeah. I thought my job was just complaining. Yeah. I didn't, want, I didn't, I didn't expect to do anything about it. <laughs> that was 13 years ago. All right, well, we'll get into that today. I'm excited sure. about learning more about what you do. In studio with us today is Heather Bame, a certified business coach that works with business owners to gain clarity and achieve their goals. Heather, welcome back to the show. Always good to be here. And I'm your host, Mark Ebinger, the owner of Krukus Marketing Agency, a company that specializes in giving businesses a competitive edge by hiring low-cost administrative and social media experts from outside the United States. A quick reminder for our listeners, you can catch video and podcast versions of the show anytime by visiting our website at satalkradio.com. And if you're a business owner in the San Antonio area and would like to have your company featured on the show, you can visit our website at satalkradio.com or call our office at 210 210- 960-8210. That's 210-960-8210. So, of course, Heather, you know I built my entire company on uh, leveraging uh, VAs from outside the United States. It's one of those things that I ran into as, a, as I'm trying to grow my company, and it's like there's a lot of cost involved in hiring labor, really? and I can't do it all by myself. You know what I mean? Business uh, startups can be really, really tough that way. So I started reaching out to this idea of hiring virtually and really kind of kicked it off. So because I'm in it every day, I, sometimes you don't see the forest for the trees, but I wanted to talk about a couple of advantages for hiring remote workers from outside the United States um, for local business owners, um, like access to a global talent pool. So if there's things you think you can't do that you are, that you don't want to do, <laughs> right? We know how that goes. That, um, tapping into this global talent pool, you can do, and of course, everybody's competing, so the, the cost of that can be really, really low, and you can get a really great person um, at a low price. Well, and I feel like here in America, hiring is usually one of the sticking points in business growth because it is so expensive, and it's not just expensive to hire and maintain an employee. I mean, ideally, they're earning back their money. But there's that risk of like, what happens if this person who I've hired and spent all this money on just goes away? And then all of a sudden I've come to rely on them. And yeah. we all know the the ins and outs, or I mean, vaguely of hiring here in America, it can be kind of sticky. So how is that impacted by going overseas and hiring virtually? So it's really not. Staffing can still be a nightmare. That's why, you know, going with a company that knows what they're doing, which is what we've been doing over the last year, Hiring these folks and, and getting really, really good at it helps ensure that the success rate is much higher for business owners that are looking to get into this market. Uh, our system is really s- built around the idea of low cost, but then also retention. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, we don't, you don't have things like uh, 401ks and lots of red tape and lots of benefits and stuff like that when you're hiring overseas. Um, that's one of the advantages of doing that is that you're getting a lower cost, less hassle environment, but you can still lose folks. You know, you go through the training process, all this stuff. It can happen just like it can happen with hiring somebody locally. Um, But our system is really geared towards lowering the risk of that because I know what a nightmare. I've been through it Mm -hmm. a number of times and, and I don't like it. And so we try and do everything we can to ensure that once somebody's got somebody trained up and going, that it can last a long time. You know, what we found is they have cre- creativity that I don't have. Oh, my gosh, the mm-hmm. younger generation, especially on digital and social media. We gave um, uh, the idea. We, we talked to a young lady uh, virtually and 
gave her our basic idea. I know what I wanted to do, but I don't know how to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. And a few minutes later, she said, well, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. And we had a 60-second commercial done within a couple of days. And it was beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) And it was so simple. Yet I can't do that. I, I just don't have the intelligence, I guess, maybe the creativity. I just don't have it. And I was able to hire someone virtually who could take care of all that for me. And uh, that was a number of years ago, but we still use it. It's still relative to what we have to say today. It's very eye-opening, you know, like tapping into Fiverr, for example. Mm -hmm. If you need something done and you don't know what it is and it's like a one-off kind of thing, Fiverr is a great resource to tap into. And for own business owners that might be a little nervous about that kind of thing, just do a low-cost deal. Do something for $20, $25. What do you have to lose? Just get after it. I think Fiverr is a great way to dip your toe into the leverage pool. It's like, oh, I'm not ready to actually hire someone and add a monthly line item on my P&L. That's, I mean, that's hard to ask someone to Mm -hmm. do, and it's hard to overcome the fear of it. But I always say, if there's anything spreadsheets that you want done that you're avoiding, Fiverr. Go see what it feels like to not have to think about it. And yeah, it probably won't come back 100% right. But nothing ever does. But you're still, you know, it's like writing a rough draft of an essay. The hardest part of writing the whole essay is getting started and writing that rough draft. And from there, it's just editing, reading through, tweaking. So what if somebody wrote the rough draft for you? I'll tell you one of the keys of operating on Fiverr, too, is to start that conversation with the person you're looking to hire. Say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. And, And you don't just outright buy something like that Mm -hmm. you just start that conversation exactly right and then the discussions there the expectations are set they make the offer and then you move forward and usually or at least in our case everything that they came up with was so much better than what we could (laughs) come up with it just and it was easy it like i said it didn't cost a lot of money 20 25 bucks i think is what the total was but they were able to make something for us that we used for years that just because i'm not creative doesn't mean I don't have to have it done. I right. still have to have. Yeah. I still have to have it. I, I've got to have somebody else to do it. And it was just so easy to use a, a Fiverr person. And there were a lot of people that bidding on it to do it for us. We we chose the the one that we thought was the best. She turned out to be just excellent. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just so happy with it. It was very, very, very easy. I love the freelance world. In fact, yeah. the guy who does the intro for our show was mm-hmm. contracted from Fiverr. Yeah. <laughs> so and I just said, hey, we need a couple versions of it. And he did it up great. And he's actually out of Austin. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Close so it doesn't have to right be across the, the, <laughs> across the world. It can be local. <laughs> right down the street. Well, that's the thing. Once you get used to, to finding those points that you can leverage, I mean, we saw this in your business, Mark. I didn't even know you when you started hiring VAs, but you were doing everything yourself up until then. And then you got a taste of having that leverage and saw what they could do. And now you're building your entire business based off of that. And you have a very, very highly leveraged business that gives you way more work hours than you could possibly do in a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm actually working on four different businesses. Right? Is it a four? Is it three or four? That's I've been there. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. <laughs> right? Well, and you need the young minds to kind of follow along. Well, you, you just need a team, yeah. right, to, to come behind you and, and execute on all the areas. Otherwise, we get lost and overwhelmed, and it's not as much fun. That's right. You know what I mean? All right, well, let me introduce you properly here. First up on the show is Wayne Keller, the Executive Director of Cadence Hope Foundation. Wayne, it's a pleasure. I know um, Heather told you about the show. We ended up getting you booked on. Um, From what I know about Cadence Hope Foundation, of course, it's a nonprofit that provides support to families with premature infants in the neonatal intensive care unit, if I said that right. The NICU is the easy way. The NICU, yes. NICU. NICU. So what can you tell me about how you got started with this whole thing? What's the, Well, I tell you what, let's back up even further and say, mm-hmm. how did the foundation, what is the story there? The well, origin. The, um, the, the basics of this, and, and it was really a friendship. It goes back to when I was in the eighth grade. And one of the guys I used to run around with is still one of my best friends. They may live in Southern California and we live in Texas, but that doesn't mean that we're not friends for life. Sure. And uh, his first grandchild, um, his daughter was pregnant. Everything was great. Her, her prenatal care was perfect. Every time she went to the doctor for her visits, it was perfect. And then one day it wasn't. 
she was working at, at a restaurant and she came home early, told her um, roommate, you know, I, I don't feel good. I'm just going to go lay down for a few minutes. I'll take a nap. I'll feel better when I wake up. Well, she went and did that. But the roommate, who was about 21 at the time um, and really didn't know what to do, thought, this doesn't sound right to me. You know, something's telling me this is not what she thinks it is. But she didn't know what to do. So she called her mom. You know, moms know everything. Sure. Well, as it turned out, and this I always say this is the first time God showed up in this story. Um, the mom was the receptionist at the doctor's office. So she immediately walked into the doctor, said, this is what's going on. The doctor said, get her in here for an exam. They did. They put her in the hospital. Five days later, Caden was born two and a half months early. Now, everything that they went through as a family, um, for instance, they live in Ventura, California, but the baby was immediately transferred uh, to UCLA in Los Angeles. It's about 70 miles away. So in Los Angeles time, that's three hour drive. And <laughs> they, <laughs> it's always busy. Yeah. And it rained that day. It never rains in Southern California, but it did that day. And so it, it was even worse traffic. But uh, they, they got the baby over to UCLA, got him stabilized and all hooked up and everything. And the doctors are are immediately telling grandma and grandpa, because remember, mom is still in the hospital in Ventura. She's still mm -hmm. 70 miles away. She just had a baby, right? Yeah. So um, the grandparents went with the baby, and they got to UCLA, and the doctors are saying, okay, we need to do this, and we need to do this, and we need to do, do this, and it's all medical terms. It's things that most of us don't have a clue sure. exactly what they're saying, and they don't have the time to explain it to us. They've got to take care of the baby, and you that's what you want. You want the baby taken care of, right? Well, after a, after a couple of hours of being at the hospital and the baby finally getting settled in and everything, um, my buddy looked at his wife, Terry, and said, um, where are we going to stay tonight? I mean, we could drive back home, but I don't want to leave. I know you don't want to leave. And, and uh, they, they said, well, I'm, you know, Grandma said, I'm not leaving. I don't care. <laughs> I'll stay here on the floor if I have to. Um, and so UCLA has a, a hotel that is full every day of the year. The waiting list to get a room is about three months. Now, how they plan that, I yeah, have right. no yeah, idea. How, because how does that work? <laughs> I, I really don't know how that works. It doesn't seem like it works well. But anyway, <laughs> um, they said, well, we'll just get a hotel here, and that'll be, that'll, we'll just stay nearby. So they get in the car, and they start to drive to look for a hotel. And they, my, my buddy Eddie said, uh, well, I'm just going to stop by that hotel just to check. He walked in the front door right as the lady at the front desk was um, on the phone. And she said, I can cancel your room. It's not a problem at all. And she said, do you, do you have any rooms? Yes, I do. Have one for three days. Mm. That's all I've got. But if you want it, you've got it. $150 a night. Los Angeles, that's not bad. Yeah. You know, I mean, it could be worse. Um, but they, uh, they, they got into the hotel and, uh, you know, got situated and everything, and they're getting ready to, to uh, go back to the hospital, actually, to check on the baby again, because they're first-time grandparents. They're nervous as, as can be. And uh, the, 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 as they went back to the, to the um, hospital, they realized that, man, there's a lot of things that we're going to have to pay for. Now, that was not a problem. Sure, three you days. Know, you know, three days. You know, Grandpa... Um, he's got his credit card. Everything's good. You know, mm -hmm. it's, this is not an issue. It's just going to be costing a lot of money, but that's okay. Now, a few days later, uh, mom got out of her hospital in Ventura, and she immediately went to UCLA to check on her son. And uh, she was able to stay with them for one more night before they all had to check out. And they, but they just didn't know what to do. And the um, amount of stress that they were going through, this was breaking their hearts. I mean, to see this little baby all hooked up to all these wires and all these machines and, and not knowing exactly what the doctors are talking about, just taking it on faith and everything. But um, they said, I don't know how we're going to afford this. He's going to be here for a while. Now, normally when a, premature ba a baby is born prematurely, the hospitals tend to keep them until their normal due date. Approximately. Ooh. Yeah. Mm, yeah. He was two and a half months early. Yeah, that's a long time. $150 a night. What are you going to do? 
She could drive back and forth every day. It's possible. It could be done. It's going to cost some gas. Mm -hmm. We actually have some another family in the same town that did the same thing. They drove back and forth every day. But luckily, she was able to go to the hospital social services people, talk to them, tell her, like, this is a problem. I'm not leaving, but I can't afford this. Yeah. <laughs> and they said, well, I'll tell you what. Um, if you're willing to share a room with another young mom that's basically in the same situation at the same hotel, it'll be $10 a night. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, we nice, can do that. Yeah. yeah. Still, it's two and a half months. Yeah. But you're and looking at... she was at, a waitress at the time? She was a waitress, yeah. Now, like I said, Grandpa was there with a the credit card. It wasn't a big deal. You know, they, they could take care of this. Um, um, so... They immediately said, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. And mom and grandma, the grandparents took off, went back to Ventura, and uh, mom was there with, with her, her son for the next two and a half months. Now, they would visit all the time, but basically she was there on her own. And not only does she have to pay for the hotel, which granted is only 10 bucks, but now she has to pay for parking. At UCLA, you can't park yourself. It's valet parking only. Mm. Then there's food. All that stuff adds up. Now, my wife and I are sitting in, in Texas, and we can't really help help them. I mean, there's not much we can do. We're 1,500 miles away. And so we just said, somebody should be helping these people. I'll bet this happens a lot more than we think it does. Now, we had three sons. My wife was in the hospital for a minute and a half till the insurance company kicked her out, and that was that, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, you know, the insurance companies, they're... Real quick to get you out, I guess. And, uh, but, but the three boys were fine. There was nothing unusual. In fact, until Caden was born, a premature baby never actually even occurred to me. I was 50-something years old. It had never occurred to me because it wasn't normal for me. Normal was in the hospital for a day and a half. Get out. Everything's fine. So we were talking about this in over about a six-month period my wife and I, and we, we just said, somebody really should be helping them. Should be a, a big charity, the government, somebody, somebody. Maybe you, but not me, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. And, and, and then and the topic went away. A couple you know, weeks later, it, the topic came back. And I always say, this is when God was going, hey, you, tapping me on my shoulder. I'm trying to get your attention here. Why aren't you paying attention to me? He would bring this. He would bring this title, this topic, back over and over and over. It happened several times over a six-month period, and finally one day, literally, I looked at I looked at my wife, and I was getting really upset. I said, "These people need some help." And we by this time we'd started looking into it. There's four million babies born every year in the United States. T just about ten percent, just under four hundred thousand of them are born premature, and in Texas, that's about forty thousand kids every year. I said, somebody needs to help them. Once again, it's not going to be me. It's going to be somebody else. But That's a big problem. It's a, you know, it really is. And, and um, I don't have a solution. And so literally my wife looked at me with a dead face as, as, as plain as could be and said, you know who needs to do this, don't you? And I stopped for a second and literally thought in my back of my head, what have I done now, and how do I do it? Because she's right. Someone's going to do this. It's going to be us. And so we were so blessed. You know how they say the IRS is just full of mean people and all they want to do is come attack us all the time? The, we, we, we got a lady at the IRS who was an angel, and she, we couldn't afford a lawyer. We didn't have any money. We didn't have a bank account for, it, for this foundation. We didn't have anything. And we, so we did everything ourselves. We filled out the forms and everything online and did everything we could to the best of our ability. And so this lady at the IRS would call, and she'd say, Wayne, why, why did you say this? And I would explain it. She'd say, great, say it like that, send it back. Happened two times. <laughs> and on the third phone call, I expected this to happen again. She said, guess what? You're a 501c3. Nice. You can actually ask for donations now and become tax deductible for the people that are making the donation. I said, great, now I do that. <laughs> now what do I do? <laughs> we have, may have the legal ability to do this, but we still got to do it. What year was this? This was 13 years ago. Oh, wow, okay. And uh, uh, 2010. 
Um, and this, and the lady was so nice. She said, send a letter to all your friends. Tell them what you're doing. Some people will help. Some people won't. Don't get mad, if the, don't get mad at them if they won't. And we never did. But I had a very good friend. Um, he's a retired Houston police officer. He used to live next door when, the kids, when our kids were little. And uh, he came over to the house one day and he said, did you send me this letter? <laughs> Because, you know, I want to make sure this is legitimate. I said, right. I said yeah, we, yeah, we did. And he, and he this, to show how long ago this was, he got in his check, got a checkbook out and wrote a check <laughs> for $100. We can now open a checkbook, a checking account. Oh, nice. And from that, we've been able to grow and grow and grow. We've helped um, families in every state of the United States. We've helped some families in other countries that have had to come into the United States and uh, it, it's just become a real blessing to us, you know. It's a lot of fun giving away money to people <laughs> that need it. But we need help. <laughs> we need help getting that money. And so we, uh, we have, you know, fundraisers from time to time and, and various ways that we've found to, to raise some money. We have some corporations that really step up, one of them being Enterprise Car Rental. Oh, fantastic. Nice company. Um, if you need to rent a car, please use Enterprise. Uh, they're a great, a great company. Um, and every year, I mean, they started out with a $1,500 donation. Now every year, their donations are more like $7,500. Oh, wow. You know? That's so a it's, big jump. It, it's a big jump. It took a few years to, to, <laughs> for them to do that. But, sure. but nonetheless, um, and then there have been some companies that have made donations for one time only through a, a specific program that they have and things. But... Uh, it's it's just been, it's a real blessing to be able to help people that for a short amount of time are so stressed with, with trying to figure out, is their baby even going to make it through the night? And that's a very big problem, a big question that they have. Um, they're doing everything they can to care for that child and if, especially if they're from out of town they've, they've got to find a hotel to stay in they've got to drive back and forth every day they've got to have lunch or dinner every single day I'll give you one little real um, I think it's an important story we helped a family in Hawaii and they lived on the big island of Hawaii but mom was going to the doctor on Oahu now, it's a normal thing. She would get up, get on the plane, fly over to Oahu, go see your doctor. Everything's great. Turn around, go home. She did it by herself. She knew she was having twins. But when she got to the hospital, um, got to the doctor's office one day, he said, well, I got news for you. I, I know you know you're having twins, but I'm sure you didn't know you're having your twins today. Oh, wow. Now, this was just a normal, this is like driving to Austin, right? It's, it's, she could do that by herself. Um. She had to call home and tell her husband that, you know, I'm not coming home. I'm, I'm in the hospital, and they're getting ready to deliver these kids. They were two months early, two little girls. And uh, Dad was stuck on the other island. He, was, he had the insurance. He had to work. If he doesn't work, they don't get the insurance. This is a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. So what did we do? We arranged for every Friday for three weeks. We had him a plane ticket every Friday night. And every Sunday, we'd send him back home. And he used to tell me, very first thing I did, I'd get to Oahu at the airport, and I guess there's a Burger King in the, in the, in the airport, I guess. <laughs> he said, I would stop and get her lunch because I know she hasn't eaten. Mm -hmm. And it's not because she isn't, doesn't want to. It's not because she isn't hungry. It's because she can't afford it. It's, I mean, a meal at, at any fast food restaurant is about eight, ten bucks, I guess, nowadays. And they couldn't afford that. So he made sure that he'd scrape, a, scrape a together a, a, enough cash to be able to buy her lunch, at, if nothing else. And when he got to the hospital, she would immediately start eating, eating lunch, and he'd <laughs> go spend time with the babies <laughs> because he hasn't seen them in a week. And I don't know. that Stuff like that just kind of rips your heart out that here's a mom and dad doing everything that they can to take care of their twins and 
They're barely making they're it. They're barely right? making it. Yeah. yeah. How know. many families do you think you, like, say 2022, right? How many families do you think you guys helped number wise? Well, I can tell you it's been 3,000 since we started. Okay. And in, in, for this year, in, in, in 2023, it's, I think it's 162. So far? So far. And we're yeah. just started August. August, yeah. So, yeah. And that's all over the United States? All over the United States, yes. So, how many people do you guys have on staff? We really don't have a staff, right. to be honest with you. Um, uh, I do most of the um, paperwork, which is, and there's very little of that. We just don't, really don't believe in paperwork. It's too much red tape. It's that's just n- unnecessary. But uh, I take care of of um, finding. You know, the hospitals contact me. I get the gift card that we're going to send to the, to the family and take care of that and send it on its way. We have fr- uh, friends in Conroe and Willis and the Woodlands area who do all our graphics. Okay. Um, and we have, of course, the family in Ventura who, you know, do, they provide a lot of uh, background information and stuff on ways to get the additional funding. So in reality, we have no employees. No one is paid. We're all volunteers. Um, but it's, and it's really six or seven people at the most. And, and some of them might actually be people that don't think they even belong with us, but they help us. Um, we have a lot of musicians, um, that will say, well, I'm, you know, I'm doing a show. Why don't you come set up a table? See if you get some donations. And we'll go and pick up a couple hundred bucks. Well, mm-hmm. a couple hundred bucks is a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. You know, it's not, mm-hmm. it's not the thousands that we need, but, but after you keep doing it enough and you eventually get there, right? Yeah. You know. So do you have like an ultimate goal of how many families you want to help or where you want this to go? Not really. Uh, and to be honest with you, we want to help at least one more. <laughs> Always one more. Always one more. And, uh, um, the, I don't know, when you talk to these families or get a, you get a, and it doesn't happen all, all that often, but we do get them from time to time, just a little thank you card. And I remember, I remember one that said, my husband was working out of town. There was no way he could get here without gas money. But you guys sent us, we sent him a hundred dollars. I mean, that's nothing, Right. But that hundred bucks allowed him to fill up his gas tank a couple of times. And this is back before gas started, gas prices started going mm-hmm. up like crazy. But uh, it allowed him to fill up his gas tank a couple of times, and he was able to get to the hospital. So they could do it as a family, you know, not just mom being by herself and dad being in another city. Um, and even if you're in the same town, it, it's still difficult. I mean, you know, we we had. One lady that was in Temple, Texas, and I, I'll never forget this story. She, uh, um, her baby was born premature and immediately transferred to Houston. Well, she was immediately in her car following that ambulance right down to Houston. She wasn't about to let that baby out of her sight. Right. And uh, but she got there, and on you know Sunday she had to go back because she had to work. She had the mm-hmm. insurance. Right. She get, I mean, once she got done with her maternity, you know, she was going back and going back to work. And uh, this went on for quite a while. And she was really she talked to her boss one day. She said, I, I don't know how I'm going to do this because Temple to Houston is about a three, three and a half hour drive, maybe. And it's doable. But, you know, every Friday night I leave and I don't come back until Sunday night. And I it just kills me during the week that I can't be there. This company, and I don't know the name of them. Um, I wish I did. They had an office in Houston as well. They relocated her to Houston. Nice. Bought her house wow. in Temple. And then so she could buy a new house in Houston and just wow. relocated her just so she could be with her baby. Wow. That's I mean, that's deal. incredible. That's fantastic. That's, I, I wish I knew the name of the company. It's, it's incredible that, that there are companies out there willing to do that. Um, well, if people want to donate to Cadence Hope, how do they do that? Well, the best way is to go to our website, which is cadencehope.org, and there's a little secure PayPal uh, link at the top. Or if you want to do it from your phone, you can just t- uh, type in uh, text neonatal to 44321, and it'll pop, right, pop right up on your phone. 
And how much of the donation actually gets to the families that you're supporting? We try to keep it at 92%. Sometimes we make it, sometimes we don't. But it's our goal, and we've done it several times. Um, we've, that's why we don't have a building. And that's why we don't have salaries. We try. We don't need that. Uh, I, I'm I'm retired. You know, all of our our friends are retired, or they they work s- somewhere else where they they have an income. They don't need an income from Cadence Hope, and so well, we try to make sure that as much as that of every dollar that's donated actually makes it to a family. The uh, uh, from what I've told by an, our accountant, who is a volunteer, um, if you can donate seventy five percent of the money donated at 75 cents of every dollar. If, that, if you can make that to the people, you are doing excellent. And like I said, we try to make it at 92. Mm-hmm. We're usually in the 80s. Sometimes we're at 98. <laughs> it just depends. Um, the, of course, the having more money in the bank makes it a whole lot easier to do that. Um, but because there are things we do have to pay for, like toner and, you know, stuff like that. Um, gotcha. You know, and the cost of getting the word out can be. Yeah, you know, I mean, for instance, we're having a, a fundraiser in September at Top Golf in San Antonio, and we're having to have some posters made. Well, they, they cost a little bit of money. You know, we have to pay. We have to pay for some things, but for the most majority of the of the items that we need, people donate them, or we just do it on our own. We take care of it, and because. These families need every penny we can raise for them. Yeah, and, and I know you're on a mission to actually make sure that that gets mm-hmm. done. We really right? do. We really do. It it, it really is. It's it's well, the few times we haven't reached our goal, it's annoying to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you had to turn anybody away? Yes, we have. There have. Does that happen often? Not as often as um, you might think. We find a way usually. Um, Work it out. To work it out. Um, sometimes it'll be just making a phone call. And I'll, g- I'll give you a perfect example. And this would have never happened without God showing up again. Um, we had a phone call from Rady Children's Hospital in San Diego. Now, there, they had a baby in the hospital, and mom was already there. Um, she was from China. Whatever was the condition of the baby, China couldn't handle it. They s- allowed the baby to come into the United States wow. for treatment. That's wonderful. Glad that we could help that help out this, China, this lady from China. But the Chinese government also required that every six weeks she go back to China. She has to be there for one week, then she can come again. Wow. And the baby was going to be there for months. Oh, wow. So the Brady Children's Hospital called us and said, uh, we've got this situation. Can you help with that? I said, well, how much is that going to cost? They said, about 2000 roughly. I said, no, I'm afraid that's way beyond us. I mean, if I had $2,000, that's a bunch of families I could help, you know, Mm -hmm. and we just don't have that kind of money. And, uh, you know, they they understood, you know, they they said, okay, thank you. And and so this bothered me that we weren't able to help this mom. And I just mentioned it to a friend, literally, just kind of complaining again. Um, I I just said, you know, we we had this lady, we couldn't help her. And she told somebody, who told somebody, who told somebody, who told somebody else. I don't even know these people. They're so far removed from me. And so I got a phone call one day. He says, I understand you, you need some money. I said, well, we always need some money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you be specific? Yeah. <laughs> we always need money. She said, no, this is for a lady from China. I said, how did you know that? He said, well, I talked to so-and-so. I didn't know, I didn't know who that person was. Eventually, we worked it back to my friend, and uh, the lady said, how much do you need? I said, $2,000. She said, you'll have a check in a couple of days. Now, I didn't call the hospital and tell them everything was good until I made sure the check cleared yeah. the bank. Yeah. Smart, <laughs> smart, smart, smart. <laughs> Which it did. All right, yeah. well, we got to wrap up for this segment. That is a, a great learning about Cadence Hope. Well, thank you. It's, it's a great mission. And, uh, it, it, and it, it, you know, it's a blessing. That's all it is. It's, it's a, a feel-good it, business for sure. It really is. All right, as we wrap up the show, quick reminder to check out our latest podcast or catch video version of the show anytime by visiting our website at satalkradio.com. It's going to be it for us for this week. You guys have a great one, and thanks a lot for coming in. I appreciate, Thank you. It. appreciate y'all.